Recession talk on Wall Street is picking up as the Fed looks primed to jack up rates several more times this year to cool red-hot inflation. Our next guest says there is a 25% chance of a recession later on in 2023. Jordan Jackson is a global market strategist at J.P. Morgan Asset Management. Jordan, always good to get some time with you here. A friend uh, just saw, shot me a note a moment ago saying, Brian, uh, this market is priced for an immaculate Fed tightening. And I think he meant by that that the Fed could engineer some form of, of soft landing. But is it time to, to just scrap that? Because clearly that may not be the case. Well, I think the reality is, right, if the Fed just sat down and did absolutely nothing with interest rates and monetary policy, the risks of recession were already increasing, right? We're, we're effectively running out of workers. Um, and so a lack of labor supply here in the market today is certainly going to uh, have a slowing effect or impact on growth tomorrow. Um, not only that, you, you, you compound that with uh, higher degrees of inflation, potentially curtailing demand. And even if, so, so if the Fed did nothing, right, that, that recession risk had, had already increased. And now on, you add on top of that uh, an overly aggressive Fed that's uh, expected to tighten policy um, by, by 50 basis points, give or so, over the next couple of meetings potentially, um, and, and, and potentially trying to lift rates to, to, to 3% by the end of, uh, of next year. So uh, a big tightening in financial conditions only, only compounds that, that recession risk. And so, look, I think the Fed uh, potentially may be sort of, sort of adding some fuel uh, to, to the fire here. But to a certain degree, I think they want to pull forward a lot of this tightening into this year to allow them to have some room to potentially adjust policy next year, uh, determining on how uh, economic conditions are start to fare out. So, Jordan, it's Julie here. What does all of this then mean for the markets? I mean, there's always what now feels like the old saw about taking the punch bowl away, right? Um, that we have seen this mostly rally over the past couple of years. Now we are seeing that accommodation go away, but can we still continue to see stocks rally this year? Well, I think what this means is that we are essentially shifting into late cycle, right? When we look at labor market, we look at inflation, when now when we start to bake in uh, the tightening financial conditions, which is going to be led by a uh, tightening from Federal Reserve policy, uh, we're certainly moving into sort of a late cycle style type of economy. And what that means is potentially looking at late cycle style type of returns, which tend to be lower uh, than, than, when we're, than when we look uh, his, his historically at, at sort of the mid cycle in the earlier phases. Uh, of the cycle. And so I, I still think equities can actually uh, perform well. We could very well be looking at uh, another leg higher. There's obviously been a lot of talk around sort of the inverted curve, particularly when we look at the two-year part of the curve uh, and the 10-year part of the curve uh, that had briefly inverted last week but has now shifted back into positive territory. You know, when we look historically uh, at some of that data, markets tend to rally pretty strongly after that initial curve inversion, uh, that, that's still sort of strong late cycle rally. Uh, so I still think equity markets can perform. It's really about sort of that runway um, and, and how much longer or how far we, we may be away uh, from, from that recession. Is one, if one is not invested right now, Jordan, in commodities, is that one of the best places they could be right now, just given what we are seeing on inflation? Well, I think from a tactical perspective, uh, I would argue that, you know, commodities may very well have uh, another leg higher. But when we look at sort of the longer term performance uh, of commodities, commodities tend to be sort of a, a mean reverting asset. If we look over the last 15 years, right, you've actually had a negative annualized return by, by investing in a broad basket of commodities. And so I think to a certain degree, investors uh, are a little bit hesitant to, to, to gain meaningful exposure to an asset class like commodities, because again, it's one of those asset classes where you kind of have to uh, get the timing, uh, get the timing right. So, um, you know, I, I still think there may be a tactical leg higher, but again, I don't think this is sort of a, a, a suit commodity super cycle or a longer term trend over the next 12 to 12 months or so, in which commodities are going to be uh, 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 meaningfully higher from today's levels. So we're talking a lot about cycles here. And when you talk about the economy being in a light, late cycle then, what, you know, and we have a lot of folks come on the show who talk about where we are in the cycle. What does that mean for investors? What tends to perform well in the markets during a late cycle that they should perhaps be looking at right now? Sure. We think investors really need to have a, a balanced approach as, as you approach late cycle, right? You, you still want to have good active managers, right? This is not a market in which, you know, rising tide lifts all boats. Uh, this is a market where you need good active managers that can go in, identify uh, fundamental companies that are trading below uh, fundamentals and or good companies that are trading below their fundamentals. And that can, I think, can generate alpha for investors over the next uh, 12 to 18 months, right? This is a stock picker's market. 
Uh, so what I think is you still want to have, uh, right, you still want to embrace growth to a certain degree, but growth at a reasonable price, an environment where interest rates move higher. You sort of want to avoid some of those high-flying names with, with, with big uh, or, or bigger valuations. Um, uh, I think there are some secular trends in, in things like healthcare, right? Uh, this is over a very long-term time horizon, but uh, there's an estimate uh, that by 2060, you're going to have a greater share of the American population that is 65 or older than 18 and younger. And so an environment in which where we are, uh, demographics are favoring a greater spending in sectors like uh, medical services, healthcare spending, I think there are some really interesting long-term secular trends uh, in that sector. And I think to a certain degree, you balance that out uh, with some of your more uh, defensive uh, names. You know, even uh, yesterday, you've seen some of the more defensive sectors uh, like REITs uh, outperform the broader market. And so I think it's really a balancing act uh, and also identifying, uh, you know, good managers that can pick uh, those, those quality companies here late cycle. Very helpful insights indeed. Jordan Jackson, global market strategist at JP Morgan Asset Management. Have a good rest of the week.